Hello and welcome to the Healthy Home Show, a brand new series on BevCam Community TV. I'm Richard Mullen, also known as the Mole Guy, and your host for this series. Each week we're going to examine a different component of your home. This week we're going to talk about your roof, the first line of defense from the elements. And each week I'll present a short segment of do-it-yourself mold removal and help you get together a toolbox to manage mold and moisture. I'm a certified mold, moisture, and roof inspector and an indoor, indoor air quality specialist with over 40 years of experience in building science. Wow. Uh, some of the areas we will cover in the coming weeks are wooden pellet stoves, dust mites and other biological contaminants, radon, hoarding, smoking, leaf blowers, diesel fuel and chemicals in the air, abandoned buildings, and a growing problem, cardboard boxes. But today is all about roofs. And we have a very special guest, Mario DeCani. He's the owner of DeCani's Roofing with headquarters right in Gloucester Crossing, right here in Beverly. Hello, Mario. Hey, how are you? Hey, thanks for coming today. No I problem. appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you for having me. I appreciate so, it. I, I put together a few questions um, that I know from talking to people when I go out on a mold inspection. Uh, you know, that the roof is an essential part of their protection. And when I see a bad roof, I can almost tell them they're going to have mold in their basement. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Which is, you know, and they'll say, well, how do you know that? You know, but it's, it's very common. Uh, so some of the questions, I just know a little bit about maybe your business history, you know, how long you've been in the business, maybe some background. Yeah, so, uh, so my company started in 2017. Um, but I've actually been roofing my entire life. I'm, uh, I'm 31 now. Uh, so pretty much my earliest memories are work, either working with my dad on a project or, you know, being at his jobs, packing the trash, going with mm -hmm. him to do estimates in his truck, driving around, stuff like that. Um, so I've been roofing, honestly, pretty much my whole life. Uh, there's no shortage of uh, knowledge in that department. And do you stay with, is there a type of, a lot of uh, roofers will tell me they only do asphalt now. They don't want anything else because there's more asphalt roofs than anything else. Mm -hmm. And so do you do more than asphalt? Do you just stay with, do you do flat roofs? Do you do? Uh, uh, yeah, so yeah, so we do asphalt shingles. That makes up for probably about 80% <clears throat> of the projects we do each season. And then the remaining 20 uh, would, we also do uh, rubber roofing. Uh, we do that. That's mostly for like commercial projects, uh, okay. but some residential homes have them as well. Uh, so we do commercial shingles and rubber, and then also residential uh, shingles and rubber. Yeah. So bo both of those materials we use. Okay. So, but you, so you, you, what about? Um, and I'm talking to a lot of people who, especially in our area, mm -hmm. when you get Salem and Beverly. They're always wondering what they're going to do about their slate roof yeah, or, yeah. or their wood roof or their. Yeah. A ceramic roof or whatever it is. Yep, yep. So we don't do anything with those. Honestly, I wish I did. Um, I stick to what I, I do best, shingles, rubber. Uh, but the slate, roof, slate roofs are great. I love, I, yeah. I love the old roofs. I love the look of them. Um, they're beautiful, but they're like, they're scary. You, you lift up one the wrong way, it's a domino effect. They start cracking. Uh, so we, we, let, we let the slate guys do the slate. Uh, same thing with the terracotta and stuff like that. I never, I never did it growing up. I never did anything like that. So yeah. I, I stick to what I know best. Uh, we, I've done minor slate repairs in the past. Uh, that, that went fine, um, but I just know where you know my skill set really lies, and that's with shingles, rubber, stuff like that. Okay, yeah. Stick to what we know best. No, it is, and I, I've been told by people who do slate, you know, stay off the roof. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Like, because I don't go on a roof. I do an inspection. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I just don't go on. If I can't see it from the ground, I can't inspect yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's the way it goes. You sl step on the wrong slate, that yeah. thing cracks, you slide in. Yeah, no one wants to be involved in that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what you're talking about. I'm all yeah. coming. You know, you, yeah. One goes and then the rest follows. Domino effect. That's yeah. it. Right. You, you, don't, you don't need that. You don't need that. And, uh, but they're just, beautiful. They're beautiful. Yeah, they are. Especially, we, we, we're lucky. When you drive around here and you see some of the roofs. Oh, yeah. And, and the combinations, you know, with the turrets. And, oh, no. okay, I it, love the turrets. It, it's like such a beautiful... Um, I mean, these houses are just great. They were done in uh, one. They told me their roof was slate, a hundred years old. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, but their problem is, you know, they have little things, and it's finding someone to repair them. Exactly. And so one of my goals is to get somebody who's a slate repair person. Yep. Yep. And they specialize, and that's for sure. Doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, no, and you have yeah, to do that. They they are beautiful. And the other question I have been asked often is. Do you use a drone when you uh, do an inspection? Or how do you do an inspection? Maybe. So I've never used a drone. Okay. 
old school. I like to you know okay. show, show up there, get up there with the ladder, uh, check it out, um, see what's going on. I've yet to use a drone. Um, I understand there's a license you have to get in order to use that first and do I'm all sure, the filming yeah. and stuff. And there's a lot of red tape before you got to get that license. Uh, so I've yet to venture off into that uh, field. I would like to. Mm -hmm. There's certainly a lot of benefits to it. Uh, it seems you know make. Those really tall buildings, like the ones you were referring to, with the turrets and things like that, three, four stories up, it'd be a lot easier to send the drone up, sure. to snap a couple photos, and have to bust out the forty-foot ladder. Well, well I had a, a very interesting. Uh, we were doing an inspection, and it was a slate roof, but it was one of those old, three and a half stories mm -hmm. brick buildings back from the eighteen nineties or whenever it. it was built. Love it. Beautiful. The problem was they were on a posted stamp lot, and they couldn't access the next lot over. Mm -hmm. So like if they were gonna do something with that side of the slate roof, they had to figure it out. The ladders up there where they gotta go over and ask the permission. Yep, you know, yep, yep. Where do they put their drainage? Mm -hmm. So I mean and, and those are things I think that people need to know and as they go in and buy a house too. That's why oh, 100%. Uh, yeah. It's a uh, it's tricky. 100%. But beautiful. I, I think this couple said to me it was worth the investment for them. Yep. because um, at the time they could afford it. And uh, they were looking for a long term. So was it know. was that side like a, a neighboring side? Was there a neighbor Neighbor's, over there? Yeah, uh, we run into that all the time. Yeah, we and, we spent. But their half. line, their line was right here at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I can't hit that table. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, we run into that all the time. Okay. Spend a lot of time talking to the neighbors. <laughs> so, I mean, one of the roofs. But is there any type of roof other than slate that you don't do? Is it? It's along with the. Do you do wood shingles? Stay away from wood. We. I don't do any cedar shake stuff it's like that. Thing. I don't do any slate. Um, nothing like that. Like I said, just asphalt shingles, EPDM rubber, asphalt, stuff yeah. like that. Um, you know, both commercial and residential. Um, you know, so we, we see uh, we see a lot across the board. Um, but that's about it. I stick to the, the two the two things we know what to do, and that's about okay. it. Yeah. yeah. And and the other question I think, and, and this comes from my customers, mm -hmm. and when I'll go and I say you really, you're at that time where you have to get somebody up here, and get someone to look at your roof and get a quote. Mm -hmm. Because if you keep putting it off, eventually it's going to cause real damage in other parts of your house. And their their biggest fear is getting the quote. Oh, for sure, yeah. And and one of the reasons, because they've all had that experience of someone coming in and not wanting to leave. Yep, yep. And, and those things, that, those aren't just stories. Those are true. They, they happen today. It happens. It happens. And um, so th what I try to tell people is how can we go about making the customer feel comfortable that what they're going to get is a quote and some good advice and some good information and an education and yet know that they're not forced to do something right there, sign on the mm -hmm. dotted line. Is, is that how you approach it? Uh, well, the way I approach it is, you know, we just come out to the home, uh, introduce ourselves. Uh, we ask you any questions you have. Are there any areas that are currently leaking? Uh, so we can take a look at that specifically uh, to, you know, see if those are what, what the, what's causing those issues uh, specifically. Um, we just walk around, grab some measurements, and then we send you over the estimate uh, within two to three hours that day. So we just make it real, you know, real simple. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, meet you, <clears throat> ask you any questions, measure it up, and that's about it. Uh, no high pressure sales, nothing like that. So we try to you know, make so it now, real easy for the homeowner. So you, do you do a physical measurement when you're up there, or do you do the, uh, there's a new system going around where they're doing satellite, satellite imaging. Yeah. So the only time I use satellite imaging is if it's a very, very complex home. And by that, I mean, you know, valleys, dormers, uh, very large home. If there's certain areas where I can't measure, uh, things like that, then we'll get that satellite uh, measuring system uh, just as kind of like a backup for me just to compare my notes to to see how close I was or how far I was mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure, you know, the measurements aren't too off. But, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time I'm out there with my wheel measuring length times width and you know, getting the measurement for the project. So, oh, okay. yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah. real simple. Yeah, and I, I think that's one of the I, – I think sometimes they, people make it too easy. Sure. Up here, because when they do the satellite, like one guy told me, I can I can do the whole thing and get get their uh, quote to them, and uh, it takes me three minutes. Oh yeah, sure. You know, and I've talked to people and say three minutes, you know, because what is a typical roof cost? Typical roof, uh, you know, it all it, so it goes off a of square footage, of course, just like mm -hmm. just like anything in this world, you know, you know. No, no two things are the same or created equal. So, you know, this roof could be huge, this roof could be small, but the average price right now, I'd say is around ten to $12,000 for a new roof replacement. That's stripped, replaced, you know, debris disposed of, permit costs, labor costs, everything all tied in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the low end, you know, we see roofs as low as, you know, $8,000, but the, the average is about t ten to 12000 right now. 
that's for like a you know fair normal sized home. So how do you how do you work with a customer or somebody that needs a quote, and do you present uh, like three tab shingles or do you do you kind of go towards the architectural shingles or do you base it on the property itself? Uh, so the thing is, though, they're actually trying to phase out three-tab shingles right now, so you almost can't even get them. Uh, oh, good. As far as I know, Home Depot, I believe, only has two or three different colors. I think they have charcoal, which is like the black, um, shake wood, which is like a brown. It looks like cedar shakes almost. And those are pretty much the only colors they're making in three-tab and because um, they want to phase them out. Mm -hmm. And they're the same price as architectural because they want to phase them out and kind of make it a no-brainer for the homeowner okay. to upgrade to architectural now. Because um, the architectural is a double laminated shingle. It's twice as thick as the three tab, has a higher wind resistance rating. Um, it has copper and zinc infused into the actual shingle to help reduce the growth of algae, like in moss, all that stuff uh -huh. the homeowner doesn't okay. want on the roof. Uh, they come with... Um, a stain a stain blocker technology in there that you know you sure you drive by roofs and see the dark stains oh, and yeah. streaks and all that uh, so the new shingles come with all that all the, the metals in there to help reduce all that uh, from growing a lot sooner than it should or beginning yeah well see that's something I didn't know that's an interesting fact oh yeah, yeah, Where yeah. they're keeping the um, the two prices similar exactly so it's a no-brainer so yeah. exactly exactly yeah, yeah. A shingle is a whole science project now it used to just be you know nails paper and yeah. uh, shingles now it's, it's a whole thing it's a whole thing yeah. yeah and I think the installation is the is real skill now before you know it was the old uh, Chuck and his truck could come up <laughs> <laughs> you know, Chuck and his truck by the way is a name for someone who just decided he was a contractor yeah I, I love that term and, Chuck and got and a truck. truck and got some uh, some tools and uh, <laughs> Sometimes dangerous. Yeah, but, that's but right. It, and uh, but yeah, they. I mean, they come out and uh, they they really didn't know what to tell people. No, for sure, yeah. for sure. And they'd always want to do the cheapest shingle because yep. they'd figure it into the job. Exactly, exactly. But I, I see the architectural shingles. I believe they're easier to work with. They're, sure. Yeah, yeah, no, they are easy to work with. Um, the installation is a lot easier. Uh, the, the three tab, you know, you used to have to chalk the lines in order to get all those keys to line up perfect. So, you know, mm -hmm. when you drive by, that roof looks vertical. You know, all the lines look nice uh, vertically running up. Uh, these ones today, uh, there's a seam every like 36 inches or so. So there's mm -hmm. far less seams and things like that. So, you, you know, your eye won't catch if anything is really off. So the, the installation process is a lot easier than the three tab shingle. But it's a lot better of a shingle. So Now, how about the... Um do you put weather shield in every? What would we call a weather shield to, in, when you put the uh, the ice barrier? Down? Yeah, ice and water barrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So code, I believe, is a, uh, around this area three feet, uh, but we go six feet. Oh, from, you do six feet. We go okay. six feet. Yeah, from uh, from right above the from the gutter line up six feet. Uh, also install it along uh, any any areas where there's step flashing, so along the sides of dormers, um, in valleys, uh, any penetrations that are coming through the roof, like pipes, chimneys vents uh, we placed that there uh, before and then after we installed the vents there so mm -hmm. all those areas um, you know are protected where wherever water because wherever water would enter in first that's where we put the ice and water barrier uh, so when when you take a you're in a valley yeah <clears throat> and before you do it you're actually putting what do you put like uh, three feet in the valley too exactly yeah so so the the, the roll is uh, 36 inches in width so we run the full width from the bottom of the valley straight up to the top of the valley okay uh, so you know you split it so you know, I have 36, so you know, 15 or whatever, so on each side of the valley, and yeah, that makes up for it. Yeah, because yeah. I, I think that's important for people to know that, because a lot of, well, and they should know, because they don't go up on a roof, but I think I, I'll get a picture and I'll stick it in so they know what's yeah, going yeah, yeah. on. You know, well, those like, are the two places where snow and ice are going to sit, yeah. at the, the edge of your roof, where we're putting six feet, uh, and then in your valley, and the valley is, you know, where two roofs meet each other, and then all, every, all the snow and ice yeah. collects right there, sits there until it actually melts and flows away. Uh, so it's very important to have that entire section, um, you know, sealed up with ice and water barrier to make sure there's no problems. How does the uh, granula on these, on the architectural things, I mean, I know just from inspecting gutters, you know, from old, that I'd, I'd find a lot of granula. Oh, yeah. And, but, and you know, that, that was a time when they say, you know, you, your shingles are pretty well beat. Mm -hmm. It's time for... Uh, but how do they hold up like that? The they hold ones? up. They hold up really well. Uh, the new shingles they hold up really well. You know, you start to really see that once you get to probably um, I'd say about year twenty ish, and then you know once your roof turns about twenty, and then then mm -hmm. after that it, it's a lot easier for the granules to begin falling off. Um, you really see it if there's for some reason there's uh, traffic ever on your roof. 
Uh, you know, if you ever have a chimney guy up there doing any repointing or something, yeah. he's stepping on those shingles. Those granules are going to start to fall off. Uh, if you know you just had siding done, they're walking up there. Uh, we see that stuff all the time, all mm -hmm. the time. So that that'll that'll allow the granules to fall off a lot uh, sooner than they should. But for the most part, they hold up pretty well on today's shingles. And I, I know that there's an insulation factor now with the, uh, the the new shingles because you get a lot more insulation on your attic on your roof. Oh yeah, it's then, a, the double laminated shingle, so it's yeah. a lot thicker than the previous three tab. Yeah. Um, it depends, you know, what underlayment you have under there. So yeah, yeah all, all those things definitely help. Now, a lot of times when I'm doing a um, an inspection and I'm seeing in the attic, I'll see a whole series of uh, underlayment. The sheathing from the attic side has been stained by mold. Yep. Now you can clean that up and you can spray it and sand it. You can do all kinds of stuff to it, but it costs a lot of money. Oh, sure. And you still may have a stain. There can be no guarantee. So what I recommend to people is uh, if you have a roof done, and let's say in the next year or two, you have your uh, contract, to also price in the removal of that mm -hmm. and putting you know, new lumber in. Yep. Is that something you'll do? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We, we do that all the time um, for reasons like that specifically. If the homeowner had mold, you know, had mold or has mold um, and they're in the process of getting that remediated uh, and they want, you know, like you said, remove the boards, the staining is still there. We remove all the uh, all the existing damaged roof decking boards. We install new three quarter inch plywood. Um, and then it's, you know, it's good to go all, all from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So everything is nice and clean, fresh start. And hopefully whatever caused that mold issue is uh, remediated, you know, and resolved before, you know, the before the new roof goes on. So they don't have that issue again. Okay. Uh, that's very important. But yeah, we, we take care of all that stuff. Yeah. No, that's yeah. great. Yeah. I, I think um, I, I find people really want to be educated. Uh, because most of the people I'm seeing now that with the, let's say we have a, an age group between about 35 and 50, mm -hmm. and many professionals who could afford to go in and buy a house in Salem and Beverly, you know, one of the big houses. Mm -hmm. um, it's not about not spending the money. It's about being told why spend the money. You know, what's my value and how do I, how do I get out of it? So what do you think... When you see a roof, what is your ex expectation of the uh, lifespan of that roof? How do I when judge? When you put a new one in. H how long is that new roof yeah. going to last? Well, that's the thing. It's uh, So it all depends on where your home is located. A lot of people don't talk about this, but mm -hmm. the location of your home is really going to determine how long your roof is going to last. If your home is right on the water, and that shingle we put on today mm -hmm. from day one is experiencing high winds hitting it. That shingle is not going to last as long as a roof, you know, like where I live behind Henry's Market, where there's no wind virtually. So, mm -hmm. you know, that they're not going to last the same. You got salt water over there, all kinds of things. If your home is located underneath, you know, a large shaded tree and there's no sunlight not uh, allowing for the, the water and moisture to dry up on that shingle and now it's growing algae, lichen, and moss, um, that shingle is not going to last as long as a sun that has direct, as a roof that has direct sun exposure so you know a good rule of thumb is i tell people we live in new england we get rain heat you know snow all the and fun we stuff get it all. and we get it all so just you know you leave anything outside for that long what would happen to it but you know i tell everyone 15 to 20 years that's when things start to go south can they go past that absolutely you know we service roofs that are have that have been on uh 30 plus years and they're perfectly fine but it just everything else has to line up where's the home located so on mm -hmm. and so forth how was it installed what quality of shingle was used uh, but 15, 20 years, that's that's what you can expect out, out of a roof, all, all depending. Yeah. yeah. But it certainly can go pe well past that. Well, I mean, so many of everybody in the, from Cape Ann, you know, down are on the water. Yep, yep. Or, or want to be on the water. Yep. And, but those two, it's usually two or three streets back where you're really getting the salt. And oh, the, for sure. Yeah, yeah. In the drive. and uh, Yeah, we do a lot, a lot of work over there by you know, the beach and everything. Things are constantly blowing off and, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Here's the, and, and one of the things that's a, a really interesting thing was brought up to me, and, and I can see it after it was, the question was, when I ask get a roofer, how do I ensure that they're, they're safe, they're going to clean up, um, they're neat, and they're not going to destroy my house, put a nice roof on and destroy my mm -hmm. house? And, and I've seen it happen. So. Oh, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. You probably have. Huh? We've, we've seen it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... So the best way to go about making sure that doesn't happen to your home is, uh, you know, you definitely want to ask the roofer, are they going to, you know, protect, first of all, 
One of the most important things are the plants. Are the plants going to be protected? Are they going to okay. put you know, maybe plywood over them to prevent anything from squishing them? Um, are they going to have large tarps that are going to be able to divert the shingles away from you know at least 15 feet from your foundation line and get those shingles far away? Mm -hmm. uh, things like that. So tarps, uh, plywood to protect any large wind, you know, sliding doors, plants. Um, are they going to protect your railings on your, I'm sure, beautiful PVC patios everyone's getting today? Mm -hmm. Is all that going to be tarped off? Um, what else is there? Uh, and then as far as making sure there's no nails and cleanup, uh, you know, make sure to ask them if they have, uh, you know, nail magnets, you know, 36 inch nail magnets on, on the wheels there running around the oh, driveways. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Uh, that's the most important point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the most important one, uh, na picking up the nails. Yeah, yeah that's... just you made me think of a situation where the people were tormented for almost a year picking yeah, up yeah, nails yeah. because the contractor was, you know, just... Let them slide. Let oh, them yeah. Fly. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, it, you know, they, they, they fly. It happens, but you got you got to pick them up. That's the most important thing. Run around with those magnets, small ones to get in between the bushes and small crevices, and then uh, the big one on wheels to do all the uh, pavement and mm -hmm. large stretches of grass and things like that. Uh, so those are the most important things, and so those are very important. Now, do you run into any hazardous materials in roofs anymore, or are you pretty much uh, are they uh, gone? Not so much for the most part. Uh, all the roofers before me took care of that. Uh, okay. Very Good. fortunate. You know, yeah. Once in a while, we do come across things that uh, you know are hazardous, and then in which case we have to uh, tell the homeowner they have to reach out to the correct outfits to have them come out and remove those materials before we can begin. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's you know few and far between at this point, and for the most part, we're able to determine that before we even begin the work. You know, I could take a look at a roof and let you know uh, what's going on with that shingle before we even touch it. Now, I don't know if you like to get into this, but it's it's been a question on my mind, and I've talked to a few people. What do you think of le the uh, leaf guard systems? Do you have leaf guard covers? No. No, that's okay. Uh, well, all right, so there's two different ones. The flat ones are the ones that kind of, like uh, the, the, they, the helmet one. They curve over and they... And go yeah. into the roof? Yeah. All right, so I don't like anything that has to tie directly into roofing. Okay. Uh, what my belief is that how that metal curls up and gets tucked underneath that shingle... I think it's almost, it's not allowing that shingle to stick to the roof. Um, Get a space. It's a space. So yeah. what's going to happen when that snow and ice is sitting at the edge of your roof? It's going to follow the, the curvature of that metal uh, mm -hmm. gutter helmet and go whoop, Back right in. underneath that shingle that's it's lifting up. So that's my belief on it. Um, also, you know, because it goes hand in hand with the roof. So when we're stripping a roof, we have to remove those gutter helmets. What do we find in there every time? Bees nests bird's nest because it's creating a perfect shelter for them to hide in. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they work good, but as far as functionality with an actual roof, I don't love it. Uh, that's just my personal preference. Uh, the flat gutter guards, um, those ones aren't bad. You know, they do the job. Leaves land on them. You know, they blow off. Uh, and then every, it's still, even with those, after every three or four years, you should have them removed and cleaned mm -hmm. because the fact of the matter is little dirt particles are going to get in there and build up. Yeah. Um, so it's not the end of the world stuff, but you know, you, you got to get in there and clean them. Well, I hate to seem like old school, but like my, you know, my preference is just have regular gutters, and let it and clean them once a year. I agree. I agree, hundred percent. Now I think if someone's on a strange place where it's really difficult to get to their their gutters to be clean, mm -hmm. then maybe you can start figuring another way to do it. Maybe there's some other system that could be used. But uh, and another th somebody did tell me that a, a roofer told me, so he usually tells people they're better off to put the money into the roof than the gutters, because the gutters systems can be expensive. Oh, for sure. But Absolutely. It's, it's like the person, If I, I guess it's like this, if you got the extra money and you want to look good and you got something new, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's you your know, thing, right? But <laughs> I, that's it. I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm yeah. old school. Yeah. Um, you know, I can get up there, clean it by hand. You know, it's done correctly, yeah. all that. And plus, while you're up there getting it cleaned, you you're getting an inspection on everything else. You know, yeah. what other reason? That's would a good, you, that's what a good other point. reason would you have to be on your roof or have somebody up on your roof? Uh, so if they're up there cleaning your gutters, you know, they'll see, hey, missing shingle, piece of siding's loose. You know, call the siding guy, you know, X, Y, Z. So there's, there's so many other things that, you know, you can find while you're up there. In, in your um when you're called out to give an estimate, mm -hmm. and let's say it's a small job, like, I mean, I see it happen a lot with the water is the, uh, you know, the old lead is pulled away from the chimney. Yep. And somebody worked on it, and they just never put it back correctly. Like mm -hmm. Something happened. They said the, uh, there was somebody up there doing a the chimney cleaner was up there. Yep, yep. 
And uh, do you do small jobs like that, or do you? Yeah, we we do, we do all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So referring to the the, the lead flashing. Yeah, the lead. Yeah, flying. yeah. Of course. Yeah. If any of that, you know, lifts. If for some reason they didn't seal it back the way they should have, you know, we go up there. We'll put that back on for you. Things like that. Um, you know, when it, one thing that's important when a homeowner is getting a new roof is this is an important question they should ask the roofer. Um, are you going to be reflashing my chimney? Uh, that often okay. always gets you know bypassed, uh, and that's a very important. Uh, you know, part of the roof there that should be addressed uh, while your roof is being installed. Do you think some contractors would go by that or, or try not to do it? Or, of I course. Don't know. Yeah, we, I see it all the time. Uh, you yeah. know, you'll drive by a, a brand new, beautiful roof. You know, nice bright black roof or whatever color it is, and then uh, you see the old tattered chimney flashing. You hanging know, tie, out. Yeah, hanging out, tied into it, or you see the black roof cement. You know, splattered around it, which is fine, temporary fix. I get it. Uh, but if you got a brand new roof, you should have flashing. That that's part of the roofing system, and it right. should be done at that time. Uh, because you know, the fact of the matter is, if it didn't fail when they were doing the roof, it's going to fail. You know, at some point. Um, and then that brand new roof is going to have to be dismantled just to put that new flashing in, and now you're putting back together a, new, a roof that shouldn't have been touched. So, so your roofing system would be uh, to take all that flashing off and, and replace it when you do a new Absolutely. roof. Absolutely. Yep, good. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah good. Yep, yep. And I, I mean, I, I was looking at a roof just a, uh, two weeks ago, and I saw it from the ground, and I could see it. It looked beautiful. And the people just told me that we were looking at something on mold inside. Mm -hmm. And I looked up. And the last thing I want, they were so proud of their roof, and I saw that, the lead yeah, yeah, yeah. hanging off the chimney. And, you know, I know what happened. They probably got, you know, it's late. Somebody says, oh, I don't have time <laughs> to do this. Let's just leave it. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we save time. We save energy. Yeah, no, but, uh, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. But those are, those are good. See, I think that's what makes a good contractor. If, if that's part of your process, because you already know what the problem is going to be. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, the last thing you want to do is have a homeowner calling you back shortly after you did a roof because they're having problems with the flashing. You know, while you're up there, you just take care of it. You do it once. You do it right once the first time, and that's it. You don't have. You don't have to come yeah. back. You know, no one wants that. Do you ever get any of those uh, big roofs that you were talking about with all the turrets on them and? gables and all kinds of stuff. Oh, 100%. 100%. We, we were lucky enough. Was it was the last season or the year before. We did five homes with turrets. Five homes. So, you know, to some contractors, that might not sound like a lot, uh, but to myself, that was an exceptional amount of uh, turrets to have to take care of. Uh, and they're difficult. They're difficult. They're difficult to get to. To get to, right. They're difficult to get to. Stay so, safe. Stay safe. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. the whole thing is safety. So, uh, and then, you know, a lot of them where they meet to the point, um, a lot of them don't have the original uh you know, metal finials that used to go on top of them uh, mm -hmm. where the shingles would all meet at the top. So, you know, we have to fabricate something or have a company fabricate something to go over that. So we, you know, to waterproof it. Um, but yeah, those, those houses are definitely fun. It's a good yeah. challenge. I got one last quick question yeah, before yeah. we end. For sure. And it is, are you offended if somebody asks to see your liability and workman's comp uh, insurance? Absolutely not. I, I pay for it every single month, so I'm very proud to show it to you. <laughs> I gotta get some gratification out of it. Like, please look at what I'm paying for. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> no, nope, no problem okay. at all. We we could provide that certificate at any moment in time. I, I was yeah. talking to a to a homeowner, and they said, well, "I feel kind of funny asking them." I no, said, no, no. You better ask them. By all means, if somebody falls off your roof and they're not covered. They, you own them. I would be alarmed if somebody doesn't want to show it to you. That's another yeah. red flag. If they're coming right. up with excuses um, and they're thinking of reasons why they can't show it to you, I, I would you know steer okay. clear of that situation. Well, okay. Well, that's our show for today, and uh, it's the first one I've done in a long time, and I'm I really appreciate uh, Mario. He's been a great guest and uh, informative and uh, forthcoming, oh, and, and, I, and I think that's important. So, it, it's been a great first show, and. Uh, Next week, uh, we'll have another show. We'll have a, uh, a mold remediator company in, and they'll tell us a little bit about mold remediation. But from now on, uh, this is Richard Mullen, also known as the Mole Guy, and we're at BevKim. Much appreciated. See you later.